basically Israel is doing this to pressure the Palestinian community in Gaza to turn against Hamas. Is that right? I'm sure that's part of it, yes. That's part of it. So this is exactly what terrorist organization, the important point here. You know, I want to understand what is the logic of Israel carpet bombing Gaza. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's a logic, if it is a good, if this will make Israel safe, I want to hear the logic. So if they continue bombing, what are they hoping to achieve? Well, what, we, know what what we know what their stated aim is. Their stated aim is to eradicate yes. and wipe out Hamas. They believe Hamas are living, are living predominantly in northern Gaza. They also are aware they're living among civilians. So it's an incredibly difficult okay. thing. As, so, I said, as I said in my so monologue, so, so, you know, it is so very, very so difficult to see how I, they do and, this and, without I, massive collateral damage. Cannot, so if I can understand this correctly, basically Israel is doing this to pressure the Palestinian community in Gaza to turn against Hamas. Is that mm -hmm. right? I'm sure that's part of it, yes. That's part of it. So this is exactly what terrorist organizations do, because terrorist organizations mm -hmm. will have no chance beating a whole nation in battle. So they terrorize and they kill the civilians in order to spread fear and terror so they can turn against their government to change their policy mm -hmm. or to resign. You have just compared Israel with ISIS. No, I, have, I, don't, I don't see any comparison between It's Israel going to be the headlines tomorrow. Piers Morgan, not, Israel is ISIS. Not only, only amongst people who weren't listening. How do now, you Mufti, next video, vital and very there informative. There are some sectors who feel that they're actually very Islamic. I think to say they're very Islamic is uh, is wrong because if you take a look at the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, salam, and even salam. the true Khalifats that followed, mm. uh, the non-Muslims felt very safe under them. In fact, uh, history proves this if you were to go back to the even the Turkish Empire, the Ottoman Empire, uh, the Jews who lived under the Ottomans and mm. the Christians who lived under the Ottomans. And that's very recent. But if you take it further to the Umayyad period, as well as the Abbasid period, uh, those who were non-Muslim felt very secure and very safe under the Muslims. The first thing is uh, what ISIS is doing is they, they, they're picking anyone who disagrees with them, not necessarily not Muslim. Not Muslim. So even if you're mm. a Muslim, but you've disagreed with them, they kill you. Mm. And that is ridiculous. That is the first point of loss for ISIS. And it, it's the first point of exposure of who they really are. They mm. have, you know, gone against the instruction of the Almighty, where uh, in the Quran, Allah says that if you are to kill one person, it's as though you're killing entire humanity off. So I, I believe that, you know, the killing of the Zaydis or the killing of uh, anyone else that has happened uh, over time, the, the, the Japanese hostages, uh, the killing of, for example, the journalists, journalists. Uh, the killing of Muslims mm. uh, who belong perhaps to a different denomination, uh, and even just those of uh, similar ideologies, perhaps, but who don't agree with you. Because if you're following it carefully, you have uh, the different factions of those fighting Assad, for example, in Syria, uh, who are killing each other. Mm. They're all Muslim and they all perhaps have uh, similar beliefs. So similar it goes to show beliefs. that there is something deeper than religion. Uh, it is it is something that is really uh, terrible because religion is being used. People are saying these guys might be following exactly what the Prophet Muhammad taught, but that's not true. If you take a look at uh, the Quran, there are verses that were revealed at times of war and verses that were revealed at times of peace. So to implement the verses of war, many conditions need to be met. Mm. From amongst those conditions is that there needs to be a war and there needs to be uh, a certain system in place where there is a supreme leader. I was having a laugh a few days ago because someone asked me uh, that if Mullah Omar was the Khalifa, who uprooted him, who upseated him, how come there's a new Khalifa? I mean, what happened? Was there a handover of baton or something? Mm. And where did it go? And, and, and that's true that those people who considered him as the Khalifa to Muslimin, you know, the Khalifa of the Muslims, how did they suddenly go to an anonymous man called Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi? And when I say anonymous, I'm talking of uh, the fact that the media told us who he was. We, we had no was, clue, no mm. idea who he was before the media, just like Osama bin Laden. Mm. Uh, nobody had a clue who he was besides a closed circle. And when the, when the media suddenly told the world, this is the man, that's when we knew who he was. So it's quite surprising to say that, you know, people feel this is Islamic. When in actual mm. fact, it isn't Islamic. It and is. like I've said, the biggest factor that sells them or that gives them away is the fact that they, they're interested in sporadic killings, destruction of infrastructure, mm. which is prohibited in Islam. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says even at times of war, you don't break a tree, you don't destroy buildings, you don't kill women and children, you don't kill the aged and the elderly. Mm. They're going against every teaching. And this is why uh, it's very frustrating. And this is what the young people don't understand. And perhaps uh, what they, and I'm going to take the liberty to speak on this, uh, what perhaps the uh, young people who are being brainwashed feel is, okay, uh, the, the Westerners kill us and our children and they're killing our women and they're doing everything That's so we're allowed to do to them tit for tat, mm. you know, exactly what they're doing to us. So we can go and do whatever uh, they're doing to us. The reality is you cannot go out and kill innocent people who are not involved at all in the war. Mm. You know, I take, for example, uh, the Al-Shabaab uh, killings in Kenya. Mm. They have a problem with the Kenyan army for some reason. So because they're too coward to face the Kenyan army, what they do is they go into Kenya and start killing innocent people who perhaps are Muslims. Mm. Perhaps they were really good people who've helped Islam and the Muslims, but they killed. 
And, and if that was the way that Islam had taught, you and I would not be seated here because perhaps our forefathers somewhere up the ladder who, who reverted to Islam or converted to Islam, to Islam would have been killed mm -hmm. by the likes of ISIS. So the duty of a Muslim is quite clear in the Quran and the Sunnah, Sunnah meaning the statements of the Prophet Muhammad Prophet peace be upon him, to propagate and promote uh, Islam in a way that a maximum number of people would learn about it and perhaps be attracted towards it so that they can uh, be saved, so to speak, mm. by turning to Islam. Uh, in this way, the opposite is happening. So rather than going out and working on the enemy in a positive way that he becomes a friend or he becomes a person who understands the faith and turns towards Islam, what they're doing is absolutely the opposite. They don't even give him a chance to, to look at Islam. Mm. They've gotten rid of him before they've even had a chat with him. Mm. So what happens? I mean, how is all this going to pan out? Uh, obviously, like I say, they're doing whatever they're doing. They're, they're probably using the internet, and this is why I believe that nations will have to start blocking out parts of the internet over mm. time in order to protect the, the, the youth from being brainwashed. Uh, you know, before when we used to hear, uh, I know, for example, uh, in Saudi Arabia, pornographic material is prohibited. So uh, the minute you try and uh, open a link, not necessarily pornographic, but something that they deem is not fit for uh, viewing here, in Saudi Arabia, for example, uh, it's blocked. So they have a complicated system of blocking complicated certain system. websites and, so on. and I think that's going to have to go global. Mm. You think so? You think the West is going to cry foul? Or anything? I think the West will be the first to do that. Mm. Uh, it, it's just my idea because having studied what's happening right now, I think the West will have to take the lead. It might sound so strange, but they're going to have to to protect the, 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 you know, the young people mm. from this type of ideology. And because it's available so you know, in, in the bedroom, 